Hey everyone, it's Guilherme and this is the second part of our Juice demo. So if you haven't watched the first part, please do so before continuing. And in this video, we're going to overview the twinning, the particles effects and the visual effects that we have in place in this demo. So if you do not recall from the previous video, this is what we are going to see. This effect that we have when we restart our game and all of the visual effects that we see in the game, for instance, the fire on our barrel, the enemies animations, their explosions, and also the particle that you see on our bullet. Let's begin by overviewing how we implemented the effect that you see on our props in our map when the game starts. If I open the level scene, you notice that we have a props node and inside here we have several different props and all of them have the same effect when the game starts. So let's open one of them, for instance, the red barrel. And you can see that this prop right here is an inherited scene. So let's open that scene. And here we have the prop scene. This is the scene that all of the props inside of our game are going to inherit from. And here we have the twin node, which is the one responsible to give that effect. Let's open its script. We have two exported variables that are going to be used to define how long the twinning effect is going to take to happen. So this means that we are going to generate a random value between them. On our ready function, we first begin by checking if our twinning is active on our active juices. This is an autoloaded script that contains several booleans that we use to check if we should activate or not certain effects. This is what I referred to when I said on the last video that some of the scripts that we have here have some coupling between the toggling system that we have in place in this demo. So if the twinning is not active, we are going to return from this function. This means that the twinning is not going to happen. But if that's not the case, we're going to get a reference to our parent, in this case, the one that we want to twin. We then configure our twin by calling interpolate property. And in this case, we are interpolating the scale of our parent. We begin at zero and we end up on one, which is the scale that we have on all of our props. And for the time, we generate a random number that I just talked about. And finally, we start our twin. And with few lines of code, we already have a nice effect when our game starts that gives the game a more polished look. Now let's see that effect that we have on our tank that whenever we shoot, we see a little cartridge that gets dropped on the ground. To do so, let's go back to our level scene and minimize our props. Here you see that we have a tank. We can open his scene. And inside of the tank scene, we have a cartridge expeller. This is the node responsible to expelling the cartridges whenever we shoot. Let's open the cartridge expeller script. We begin by getting a reference to our twin. And this is what we are using to move our cartridge whenever we shoot. We then have a few exported variables. The cartridge is the scene that we use to represent the cartridge. So we can change this if we need to, for instance, a different cartridge or a different color of cartridge. And the min and the max distance play a similar role that we saw on our minimum and max time that we saw on our prop twin. They are going to be used to generate a random number that is going to define how distant from the tank this cartridge is going to be expelled to. Once again, on our ready function, we check if we are enabled by reaching out to our active juices. And when expel is called, this is the function that is going to be responsible to expelling the cartridge. We check if we are enabled. And if we're not, we're going to return from the function. If that's not the case, we're going to calculate the position in which the cartridge should be when it gets expelled. And to do so, we get our global position and we use a random generated normalized vector 2 and multiply it by the distance that we want to move, which once again is a random number. We then create a new instance of our cartridge set its global position to be equal to ours, change its rotation once again by a random number, set it as top level because we're going to add it as a child of ours and we don't want it to move with us. And finally, we configure and start our twin. And this function is going to be called whenever on barrel shot is called, which is a function that is connected to a signal of our barrel that is emitted whenever we shoot. As for the muzzle flash that you see on our barrel whenever we shoot, that is done by our barrel using an animation that just shows and hides this muzzle flash sprite that you see as a child of it. So whenever we shoot, we play an animation, which is called shoot. And as you can see, all of what this animation does is showing our muzzle flash and hiding it again in a short amount of time. The other effects that we have are all on our enemies. So let's open the enemy scene. That flash you see whenever the enemy gets damaged is done using an animation player on the damaged animation. And here we are using the enemies modulate property to animate that flash. So what we do is on the second frame setting our modulate and here we used raw mode to be 10 on the red, green and blue channels. And right after that, we set it back to one. So this gives us a nice flash effect that you see whenever the enemy gets damaged. The last visual effect that we have on our enemy is the explosion that we see whenever we kill an enemy. This is done by instantiating a new scene, which is an explosion. So we can open that scene 
and look for explosion. And here what we have is an animated sprite that is going to play the explosion animation whenever this scene gets instantiated. So let's open the explosion script. And here, as you can see on the ready function, we play the explosion animation. We have some audio configuration here, but we are not going to go into detail. This is going to be for another video. And with this, we have covered all of the visual effects that we have in place on our demo. Lastly, we have the particles effects. And as of now, we only have one particle effect, which is the one that you see on the bullet whenever it's flying. So let's open the bullet scene. Here we have a particle studio. And as you can see, the emitting is set to off by default. That is because we only want to emit this particle when we are with the particles turned on. And this is done in our bullet script. So let's open this script. And on our ready function, we set our particles emitting variable to be equal to the particles boolean that we have inside of our active juices. And with this, we can toggle this on and off if we so desire. And with this, we concluded the visual effects part of our demo. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section. As always, you can find the complete project in GitHub. There is a link for it in the description of the video. Keep in mind that the project was made using Godot version 3.1. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.